Hello, everyone. I'm Zhou Longyu from Johns Hopkins University. Today, I'm glad to share our work, HCSFQ, Hierarchical Core Stateless Fair Queuing. Fair queuing is a canonical mechanism to provide fair bandwidth allocation to network traffic. There has been a long history of research on fair queuing. Until recent years, there are still some very nice works about it. For example, there are several interesting works from NSDI in recent couple of years. These works can be applied to implement fair queuing using existing hardware. However, most of the proposed solutions require maintaining peripheral states, which is expensive, or they may need complex queue management, which is not supported purely in the data plane yet. We noticed that about 20 years ago, there is a work called the CSFQ. It achieves fair bandwidth allocation, and it does not require peripheral state in core switches. The peripheral state they need is basically the rate of each flow, and it is only maintained in the edge switches, and the edge switches will label the flow rate to the packets. All switches maintain a fair share rate alpha for each port. The fair share rate indicates the fair bandwidth allocation for each flow. And the fair share rate is updated upon whether the packet is dropped or not and it does not require any peripheral state. The switches drop packets based on the flow rate carried in the packet, and the fair share rate maintained in the switch. Here we show a quick example. We have three flows coming, and the flow size are 8, 2, and 5 respectively. The link bandwidth is 10. The fair share estimator would calculate the fair share rate alpha as 4. As a result, the red flow will drop 50% of its traffic, and the green flow will drop 20%. However, although CSFQ does not require peripheral state, it didn't take off. There are mainly two reasons. First, CSFQ requires changes to the packet header and the coordination between switches in the network. Second, to realize CSFQ at line rate, we need hardware support. Fortunately, two emerging technologies are making CSFQ relevant again. The widely used data center provides a place for CSFQ to deploy under a single administrative domain. As the emergence of programmable switches make it possible to implement user-defined packet processing at line rate. However, data center deployment also raises new challenges. As the traffic in a data center network today is naturally structured in a multi-level hierarchy. As a result, only fair queuing is not enough. And hierarchical fair queuing may be more desirable. We show a simple example here. The two red flows are from tenant A, and the green flow is from tenant B. With fair queuing, tenant A gets a share of six, and tenant B gets four. While with hierarchical fair queuing, the bandwidth is divided equally between the two tenants, and both tenants get throughput five. However, implementing hierarchical fair queuing in the data plane is challenging. Existing solutions require per flow state, complex queue management, and uh, hierarchical queues. In our work, we present HCSFQ, which enables hierarchical fair queuing on commodity hardware at line rate. There are mainly two challenges. First, naively extending CSFQ to a hierarchical version may also require a hierarchical queues. Second, some major components in CSFQ are not directly supported in programmable switches. In the following slides, we will show how we overcome these challenges. Naively extending CSFQ to HCSFQ requires, requires maintaining a hierarchical queues. We wonder if we can simplify this part 
as the overall just produce a result to determine whether the package should be dropped or not. We achieve it by maintaining internal aggregated states for each hierarchy. The states are organized as a tree. Each leaf node represents one flow, and each non-leaf node maintains aggregated states for the flows belonging to it. And the root node maintains aggregated states for all the flows. We follow the previous example to show how we maintain the aggregated states and get the drop ratio in HCSFQ. We first construct the tree with the aggregate nodes. For example, the aggregate node 2 represents tenor A, and it will maintain aggregated states for the two red flows. And the node 3 represents tenor B, which contains the green flow. And the node 1 represents all the flows. We have the incoming traffic of tenor A and tenor B at 10 and 5, respectively. Using fair share rate as a meter, we will calculate alpha as five. And then we take alpha as the capacity of 10 A and 10 B. And we can then calculate the fair share rate for 10 A and 10 B recursively. With the fair share rate, we can then get the drop ratio for each flow. Also, note that CSFQ is a special case as it only has one layer and maintains only one aggregate node. Then we show how we realize HCSFQ in, in the hardware by introducing our data plan design. Both CSFQ and HCSFQ has three major components, rate estimator, probabilistic dropping, and fair share estimator. We can see that the rate estimator requires some complicated operations like exponential operation, division, and multiplication, which are hard to achieve at line rate. And the probabilistic dropping also requires a random float and a division. While the fair share estimator cannot be realized directly because it has a dependency when updating alpha. In our design, we use a, we use a window based mechanism to estimate the rate. We calculate the total bytes received within each window and use it to update the current rate when the window passes. For the probabilistic dropping, we use a mass conversion to discretize the equation and make it easy for switches to process at the line rate. And we use a set of bit shifts to do the multiplications here. Please refer to our paper for more details. And for the fair share estimator, we use a small number of recirculation packets to update alpha. And we separately generate extra packets for recirculation in order to avoid packet reordering. Now let's go to the evaluation part. Our test bed contains a top of rack Tofino switch and five servers. Each server is equipped with a 40G NIC. We also did a large scale simulation with a web search workload on a leaf span topology. In this talk, we would like to share two sets of results. How HCSFQ works on the rack scale test bed and how HCSFQ works for a data center workload in simulation. Please refer to the paper for more evaluation results. First, how HCSFQ works on the test bed. Let's first take a look at the fair queuing scenario. We send 32 flows in total. As TCP congestion control provides fair bandwidth allocation, the flows have similar throughput even without HCSFQ. Adding HCSFQ to the switch does not change the bandwidth allocation. However, for the hierarchical fair queuing scenario, we let tenant A send 24 flows and tenant B send eight flows. HCSFQ can provide performance isolation 
between the two tenants and each flow in tenant B gets three times higher throughput than each flow in tenant A. We also show the results for a DCN workload, the web search workload. We compare HCSFQ with TCP, DC DCP, and the two state of the art solutions, AFQ and SP Pipo. As we can see, HCSFQ achieves up to 60% lower flow completion time than vanilla TCP. And the AFQ and the SP Pipo are about 15% better than HCSFQ on flow completion time because HCSFQ enforces fairness by packet dropping and cannot provide a guarantee for sensitive packets. We can also observe that the gap between HCSFQ and AFQ or SP Pipo does not grow much as the traffic load gets larger. So in conclusion, we present HCSFQ. HCSFQ provides hierarchical fair queuing on hardware switches at line rate, and it does not require per flow state at core switches or hierarchical queue management. The code is open source on GitHub. Thank you. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions.